For the visually challenged, the following program begins with an introduction from Ranger Karen inside Esplanade Studios. Louis Michaud, seated in front of various musical equipment that includes the backdrop of a church organ, transitions the introduction into his performance. Louis, playing solo fiddle and singing, introduces the various selections throughout the performance. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the following presentation. Hi, I'm Ranger Karen with the Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve. We're part of the National Park Service, and we're here to preserve and protect the unique cultural, historic, and natural resources of South Louisiana. A big part of the culture down here is music, and we're really excited today to bring you Louis Michaud of the Lost Bayou Ramblers. Take it away, Louis. I'm gonna start with a song called Hey Mom from the 1920s, a very uh, interesting and sad story by Mayus Lafleur and uh, Leo Swallow about trying to find his mom, but he never actually got to find her, but it was the, uh, passed away in a moonshine ball right after it was recorded in Atlanta. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the song after I play it for y'all. called Hey Mom by Mayus Lafleur and Leo Swally. They recorded that in the late 20s. And uh, like I said earlier, Mayus Lafleur never got to hear the song come out because he ended up passing away in a moonshine brawl right after he recorded it. The, really, the essence of the story is that he recorded that song so he could find his mom. He was orphaned uh, at birth and he was gonna use the money he made from the recording to track down his mom, and he was gonna use the song as like a calling card to say, mama, where are you at? I'm looking for you. And that's the saddest part of the story. 
Uh, the other side of the, of the record was called Ton Papa Ma Dior, means your daddy threw me out. You know, it's an interesting thing that Louisiana French music, like so many musics, is used to express your pain. You know, it's, it's used to, uh, if he hadn't had that chance to play that song, he might have never been able to tell his story. And when you listen to the lyrics of that song, he says, I want to meet you before I die, and he never gets to meet her. But we all get to hear the song and live with it. Uh, I, in fact, get to see his grave every time I go visit my in-laws in Ville Platte. It's right there at a red light. And uh, I see my yous, and I wish him, a little, wish him a little prayer. Hopefully, he's with his mom in heaven. So that's, uh, that's what we hope. Thanks for being with me. My name is Louis Michaud. I play with the Lost Bayou Ramblers. Uh, we've been playing Louisiana French music for the last 21 years here in Louisiana. And abroad. I started playing music uh, in my early teens and I joined Le Frami Show, my family band on the stand-up bass in the mid-90s and uh, my father Tommy Misho is an accordion player. My brother who plays in Lost Bayou Ramblers, Andre Misho, is an accordion player and he's an accordion builder. So uh, you know a lot of music in our family. When I was 19 years old I took it upon myself to learn Louisiana French. You know, it was a language that I heard all the time growing up, and it was almost like I didn't even know it was French. I didn't even know it was, I didn't see it as a foreign language because it wasn't. It was a language that the elders spoke, and I figured when I grew up, I would speak it one day. But it wasn't that simple, so I had to learn it for myself, and it became a lifelong passion of mine, one that I still follow to this day. I speak Louisiana French. My wife does as well. She's a teacher of it. And we both are teaching our, our three boys to speak it. So it's uh, you know, some, not something you can learn overnight, and especially since uh, it was outlawed, along with every other language besides English, uh, over 100 years ago, it's made it that much harder to keep the language alive. But there's so many people that are learning it every day. Uh, so many people speak it every day. And it's definitely a living language. The next song I'm going to do is a song by Leo Swallow and Moise Robin. Leo Swallow played with Mayuse Lafleur before Mayuse passed away, and then he got another accordion player to step in named Moise Robin, who's from near Arneville, Louisiana. They recorded quite a few amazing sides of 78s, and this one I'm going to do is called Blues de Nègre Français. It's the blues of a Frenchman, and uh, kind, of a similar, kind of a similar thing. He says, I'm, I have only my dad. I don't have a mom or any cousins or any brothers. But he's really just using it to have pity on himself because he wants the girl to feel sorry for him. Uh, it's a pretty interesting and funny song, but it's uh, a great example of how, you know, Louisiana French music is such an American music. You know, it's got the blues, it's got country, it's got so many different French roots from the Creole, French, Spanish, African-American influences, uh, Native American influences, and uh, such an American music. and. Uh, this song to me is a great a great example of that. It's called Blues de Nègre Français. J'ai plus petit frère, j'ai plus petit soeur J'ai plus parent, j'ai plus nana J'ai plus parent, j'ai plus ami J'ai plus petit frère, j'ai plus petit soeur Voyez tout seul comme pour vos filins Me 
gardons la messe qui, qui vient. Et il négre sa première cori. Me gardons la simatibé. Dépêche-toi, laisse-moi voir tes yeux, cher. Me gardons la bas, gardons la bas, mais les prévenus. Me gardons la bas, gardons la bas, mais les prévenus. That was a Moise Roban tune with uh, Leo Swallow. My name is Louis Michaud. I'd like to thank the Jean Lafitte National Historic Park and Preserve for having me. I love to be able to play this Louisiana French music that uh, I'm fortunate enough to have learned and been passed on by my family. And, uh, you know, as much as we're writing new music, there's so much old music that has not been redone. You know, there's so many hundreds and thousands of songs to be, to be learned and to be covered and to be explored and to learn the stories behind. That is a, a lifetime work right there, but uh, I also do love to write new music. And uh, the next song I'm gonna play for y'all is a song off of the Lost by Your Ramblers album, Kalinda. And this is something that I wrote about my grandma who was raised in Patterson, Louisiana on what was formerly the Bayou Teche, and now the Lower Atchafalaya Extension, I think they call it. And uh, she grew up in Patterson on the banks of the bayou, and a man told us this story at her funeral, actually. <laughs> One of those stories you wait, didn't want to ask her about. He told us that she used to swim across the bayou in the middle of the night to go meet her friends to go polecat hunting on horseback. And I thought it was just such a great story. I mean, for one, Swimming across the bayou in the middle of the night is not something that everyone thinks about doing. Most people think about not doing it, I believe. But, uh, <laughs> and then to have someone waiting for you with a, a horse and a gun to go hunt in the middle of the night, that sounds pretty fun as well. So, you know, I kind of had to turn that into a story because that's not the granny that I grew up with. You know, of course, she was a super, uh, super interesting person and a very, uh, very full spirit. But, uh, you know, to know someone in their youth decades before you were born is a whole nother story. So I wrote this song, we call it Granny Smith. This is for Granny. Amor, ah, c'est mieux mon nom et mon pardon, la perdre. 
Je se ne rappelle pas minuit, apaisé par un bruit, c'est chez Pédo de la nuit. Sauter dans le bourg pour traverser le bayou, monter sur les chevaux pour chasser les chapeaux. Après les bêtes avec un bon pour me chouer, jouer en cachette pour fumer ma cigarette. Maman a crié, papa a fouetté. Si c'est vrai, mais moi je me souviens. Smith, and uh, the first line of that song is a is a line she always told us and we use to this day. It says, "Mama, you always told me it's better to ask forgiveness than to ask permission." Words to live by. <laughs> so that was uh, off the Kalinda album that we did with Lost Bayou Ramblers in 2017. To be able to write new music about our experiences as living in the 21st century I think is very important because if people wouldn't have written songs about their experiences a hundred years ago we would have known a lot less about what it was like to live back then and you know it, it's amazing to be able to be part of an art form that continues to live people talk about tradition and what would tradition be without keeping it alive and keeping it expanding and keeping it new. I think that Cajun music has always been super adaptable and has kept current all the time, you know, no matter if it's been throwing a jazz drummer into the mix, like Leo Swallow did almost 100 years ago, bringing the first drums into Cajun music, or bringing electric guitars and bass and everything. It's just, you know, music is a, is a living language and uh, We can't talk about tradition without talking about ingenuity and progress, you know. Uh, and it, it's a, it can be a tricky, a tricky line to straddle because as we're learning a tradition and creating new music, you know, we still have to be aware of what makes it, you know, what makes it traditional. Something that might have been punk rock 100 years ago, now we see as traditional. And something that you might see as traditional now maybe wasn't traditional 100 years ago. So there's, uh, there's so many things to take into account, but I think really it's up to each artist to do what is authentic to his or herself. You know, that's, that's the most important thing about keeping the music going. The language is also very important to me because the rhythm of the fr Louisiana French language is really what gives the lyrics its place in this music. You know, you can sing in English, 
And it can work great sometimes, but overall, the music was created in French and it just really has this similar bounce. And it's, uh, as you can see on Granny Smith, there's so much rhythm in the language. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. But it also takes being able to improvise, which takes being able to know the language and be fluent in the language. So it all goes hand in hand. I tuned down my fiddle to open tuning. A lot of the music that is considered really old school KG music was only on the violin because the accordion is much more of a recent addition to uh, Cajun music, I say in the last hundred years, but if you know the story of the Acadians, which the word Acadian is now known as Cajun in Louisiana, uh, one of the only instruments that they were able to bring down during the Grand Arrangement, the expulsion from Nova Scotia, was the fiddle, and of course it was the most easily accessed instrument, basically a universal instrument. I mean, accordions have been as well, but they weren't readily available in, in uh, Louisiana until like a hundred years ago. And uh, there's only a few recordings of the old fiddle music, but you can hear how much the music was actually different. And there were so many more dances and so many more rhythms over a hundred years ago that when the accordion came in, it gave the music a different twist and accentuated certain dances so the waltz and the two-step really made it through in the blues, but there's a lot of dances that didn't make it through and a lot of rhythms. So there's some of these old recordings is just twin fiddles, triple fiddles. And I got to play with a 101-year-old fiddle player last year who unfortunately passed away in December. His name was Willie Durry. So he played house dances in the 1930s and they said they only had fiddles and guitars and never accordions. And uh, he was uh, you know, of a Creole family, the Durrisos. His mom was African-American, his dad was French-Canadian, and uh, you know they played house dances up into the 40s, but after the war, it went to the club scene and they didn't do any more house dances, and the accordion came in and was, uh, has been the main instrument of Louisiana French music ever since. One of my main mentors was Ethel Mae Bork. She grew up next to our family camp, La Rue Quipon, in uh, next to Vermilion Parish, and her father, Sidney Bork, was a man of the land. He grew all of his own food. He raised all of his own geese and ducks and pigs. He had horses and cattle, grew sugar cane and corn and everything. And he taught her so much about that life. And I got to meet her later in life. She taught me so much about the language, about the land. And she also taught me so much music. I knew her father, Sidney, as a young boy. I followed him around his farm and he'd explain everything going on, all in French, because he didn't speak any English. And when he was passing away, uh, she went into his room and sang him this song. She said she sang it for an entire week as his pain medicine. And this song kept him feeling better through his last days. And when she would stop singing, he would start moaning, she said. And she said, do you want me to sing it again? And he nodded his head yes. And she kept singing it over and over. And she taught me this song. It's called La Vie d'un pauvre malheureuse. It's about, you know, growing up poor, but as we call it, a vermillionaire, where you're, you have the riches of the land, even if you don't have uh, assets and money. And, you know, this is what she taught me so much about. She grew up, grew all of her own food well into her 70s and 80s. She had to evacuate during Hurricane Gustav, and that was the last time I saw her. She passed away in Arkansas after that. But uh, she left us with so much music, and this is the main song. It's called La Vida en Pauvre Malheureuse. It's about her growing up. It's the song she sang to her father. And I'm gonna do the French and English, which are both hers. She did her own English translation of all her own songs, and uh, it's beautiful how she does it. So I'm gonna sing La Vida en Pauvre Malheureuse. J'étais aîné, longtemps passé, avec des grands cheveux noirs, des yeux marrons comme les secots. Comment j'étais aîné, longtemps passé, 
Moi, je t'ai lâché à jolie fille à mon papa. Partout, ça lui, il avait besoin. Mon pauvre papa, c'était un pauvre récolté. Si mon papa aurait désiré un petit garçon, moi je l'ai jamais attendu cela monter. Et moi et mon papa et mon chat fragiles, on a fait la chasse et on a piagé. On a pêché au long du bayou vers Mignon Pour faire un vie des bébé pauvres malheureux When I was born such a long time ago With long black hair, eyes brown like musk When I was born such a long time ago I was my papa Sydney boy's most precious little girl Not at all what he needed, for don't you know My papa, he was a poor farmer, don't you see And if he ever desired to have a little baby boy I surely never did hear him complain For me and my papa and my little brother Jess We hunted and fished And we also trapped Just to make a living along the vermilion, don't you see? Just to make a living for the rest of my days I don't follow my papa along the river anymore. I follow my old dog speck through the shadow keys, through the blackberry bushes, and through the marshland. Just to make a living for the rest of our days. It's a very, uh, very special song. To me, uh, you know, Ethel May was such an amazing mentor, and that song really explained their life. And like I said, it was the pain medication for her father on his last days, and you know, really brought to perspective their life and appreciation for the old way of life. And uh, speaking of the old way of life, you know, to be a to be a Louisiana person, no matter if you're from the French background, African, Spanish, German, Italian, Native American. You know, it all started with the Native Americans that taught the first French settlers here everything about the land. And this is a song that is called Sauvage Center Chico. It means Indian on a stump. And it's a, it's a song basically saying that the Louisiana French people give merit to the Native Americans that this is their land and that they taught us everything we know. One thing that I've never really heard but I feel like has to be, has to be a influence on Cajun and Louisiana French music is the rhythms and the singing style. There has to be some Native American influence. You know, I think that just like the Mardi Gras Indians and these cultures where the Native culture has, has progressed into a new part of the culture you know, it's very much the same in the Cajun and Creole cultures. It's a huge part of it without it being stated. And this song right here actually does state it. So it's called Sauvage Sene Chico. <laughs> Thank you. 
liberté On a eu de ta maman Pour en heurer le chef en thé and it's been a pleasure to play for y'all. I'd like to thank the Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve. Eh bien, merci d'être avec moi. Soyez-vous bien. On va se voir la prochaine fois. <laughs>